Hello, I'm Dr. Clemens Budde, and I'm a nephrologist who specializes in treating patients with TSC. Now I would like to share my experiences with you. In some cases, renal manifestations may develop in young children with TSC. However, the age of onset for AMLs is typically during the teenage or young adult years. Cysts usually develop in the same age range, either in parallel to AMLs or a little bit later. In my practice, I've seen young adults with very large cysts. Yet, renal cysts may develop in children, mostly in those who also have the PKD gene and polycystic kidney disease. The prevalence of AMLs in the normal population is about 1 to 2 percent, and these tend to be asymptomatic and unilateral, whereas in the TSC population it is about 70 percent, and the AMLs are multiple, bilateral, and can cause severe bleeding. These statistics clearly show that AMLs are a significant hallmark in the disease of TSC. Therefore, they are part of the diagnostic criteria for this disease. Some people may think that every patient with an AML has TSC, where it is actually the case that more people with TSC have AMLs than the general population. In people that do not have TSC, I call AMLs incidentalomas, since they often do not have any clinical significance. Compared to TSC-related AML, this type is typically smaller in size and within a single kidney. It may have some growth tendency as a result of estrogen and occurs more frequently in females. In contrast, patients with TSC have multiple AMLs in both kidneys. So in my experience, on an incidental CT finding, it would be easy to distinguish whether it is an abnormality or if it is more likely to be an AML associated with TSC. And once you determine there are multiple AMLs in both kidneys, you may observe the patient and see that he or she has fibromas on the skin around the nose and then it becomes obvious to me that this patient has TSC. Generally, AML structure can be very diverse. Angiomyolipomas, by virtue of their name, may contain angio or vessel, myo or muscle, and lipo or fat components. The distribution of these components may vary largely between different AMLs and even within a patient. For example, some AMLs may have a mix of all three structures, while others may be fatty and composed predominantly of lipids. Other AMLs may be more vascular, contain aneurysms, and are at risk for bleeding. The histology may vary between or even within AMLs. With varying structural components, AMLs may behave quite differently. Tumor cells from an AML may infiltrate into normal kidney tissue and spread to other areas. There are cases where AMLs may not grow as a solid tumor and it is hard to tell where the tumor starts or ends. In these cases, you cannot separate the encroaching tumor from the normal tissue. Lymph angiolyomimetosis, or LAM or LAM, is another very rare pulmonary disease occurring mostly in women. However, patients with LAM oftentimes also have AML. Based on this correlation, there's a theory that LAM may be a kind of metastatic disease derived from AML. Knowing this, I would recommend that patients diagnosed with LAM should also have a renal ultrasound done to check for AML. There's also a question as to whether an AML could possibly develop or undergo malignant transformation to renal cell carcinoma, which is quite rare, even in the TSC patient population. That said, MRI may be a useful tool to distinguish between a changing AML and renal cell carcinoma, as it can reveal signs of renal cell carcinoma, such as heterogeneous enhancement, 
calcifications or the absence of fat in the AML.